our Lord Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has granted us a tremendous gift. He has given all of us, the believers, a tremendous gift. Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a role model to follow so that we can ascertain good morale and we can learn beautiful words and we can learn how to deal with our wives and our children and our neighbors and our friends and the non-Muslims and our co-workers. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has given us a qudwa hasana and that is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For indeed Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he informed us in his book لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ And indeed Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala has given for you in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا A good example A good example وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدُوَانِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ My noble believing brothers and sisters, the first thing is that I remind myself and I command all of you with the greatest of all affairs and that is to have taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal to fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the fear of an individual who understands that his Lord has the perfect ability to see and to hear. That which I would like to remind myself with and the brothers and the sisters and that which I would love for all of us to contemplate upon in our present circumstance, living in these lands, is our moral conduct. And the moral conduct that we were nurtured upon. The things that we were taught from morale and behavior. The things that we learn on social media. The things that we see on the newspapers the words that we hear from people who don't have any moral conduct, no moral values. And for this reason, I remind the brothers and sisters concerning the tremendous words of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala when it is that he said, Alam tara kayfa darab Allahu mathalan kalimatan طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ أَسْلُهَا ثَابِتٍ وَفَرْؤُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ And have you not seen the example that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala strikes as it relates to a good word? That it resembles a good tree where the roots are firm and the branches of this tree because it is planted firm and it receives that which is needed the branches they shoot up into the sky. This tree, it stands well. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He mentioned next, Tu'ti ukulaha kulla heenin bi idni rabbiha. That every time you find that this tree, it brings forth good fruits with the permission of Allah. This is the example that Allah Azza wa Jal has stricken for us concerning good words. Having good speech. وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does He do? He strikes parables for humanity. And Allah did not mention only the believers here. He said that He strikes parables for humanity in order that they may contemplate. In order that they may think. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strikes the example of the opposites. وَمَثَلُوا كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ كَشَجَرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ اجْتُثَّتْ مِنْ فَوْكِ الْأَرْضِ مَا لَهَا مِنْ قَرَارٍ And the example of an evil word. The bad words that we were taught. The evil speech. The speech that has no benefit in it. 
Allah is giving us this example here that we may contemplate and put on the scales and weigh the good words and the bad words. So the bad words, then its similitude is what? It is like a bad tree. Wherein this tree, the roots are not planted firmly in the ground. The roots are not planted firmly in the ground. So what happens to this tree? It is the opposite of the good tree. Nothing comes from this tree. It doesn't bring forth any fruits or any benefits. This is the example which Allah wa ta has given us concerning a good word and a bad word. My noble believing brothers and sisters, the religion of Al-Islam is a religion that teaches us to be kind-hearted and to be lenient. And that is because this tremendous characteristic, it is a characteristic which the Prophet wasallam described Allah wa ta'ala with, which is found in the Sahihain of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, on the authority of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where it is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah rafiq, yuhibbu rifqa fil amri kullihi. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is lenient. Allah is kind. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is soft. And he loves that gentleness and softness be put into every single affair. So what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did here? He gave us an example of leniency and kindness. And this is what the religion of Islam directs every individual who claims iman to be upon. To have kind words. To be lenient. To be people that are just. To be people that are soft. Because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is kind to his slaves. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is kind to his creation. His kindness is not only to the believers, but Allah Azza wa Jal has extended kindness to all of his creation. He has also extended kindness towards the non-Muslims. Did not Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala extend kindness towards even the animals? So this is a tremendous sifa, a tremendous characteristic that comes with iman that comes with the religion of Al-Islam. For this reason, I direct my noble believing brothers and sisters in that which has come in Adab al-Mufrad of Imam al-Bukhari and it is also found in Jami al-Tirmidhi that the noble companion Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala an, he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man u'tiya haddahu min al rif فَقَدْ أُعْتِيَ حَذَّهُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ Allahu Akbar Listen to these heavy and tremendous words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said And whomsoever has been given his portion of leniency Whoever has been given his portion of compassion and kindness Indeed he has been given his portion of good He has been given his portion of what Ya Abdullah he has been given his portion of good. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not stop at this point. He continued by saying, وَمَنْ حُرِّمَ حَذَّهُ مِنَ الرِّفْقِ فَقَدْ حُرِّمَ حَذَّهُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ And whomsoever has been what? Whomsoever has been denied leniency. Whomsoever has been denied compassion. Whomsoever has been denied kindness. Indeed, this individual has been denied that which is good. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continued, he said, وَأَثْقَلُ سَيْءٍ فِي مِيزَانِ الْمُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ And the most heaviest thing that will weigh on the scale of the believer on the day of standing is to have good morale, is to have good character. And we know 
that the scales will be brought forth on the day of standing. But when it is that the Prophet wasallam mentioned this statement here, in the most heaviest thing, on the scale of a mu'min, then we understand from the kalam of the ulama that husnul khuluq is not the heaviest thing, but rather it is from the great affairs of good morale that will weigh heavy on a person's scale on the day of standing, on the day of resurrection. For we know of the hadith where it is that the the bitaqa, the statement La ilaha illallah will be written on a piece of paper and all of the deeds will be written or all of the deeds will be placed on one side of the scale and La ilaha illallah will be placed on one side and it will weigh out all of the deeds on the other side. So we know that this is the heaviest statement on the day of standing. So what is meant here when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Atqalu shay'in fi mizan al mu'min then it is one of the great characteristics of the believer that if he comes with husnul khuluq, good morale, that it will be heavy on his case. And it is just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al hajj Arafah, that hajj, it is Arafah. Then we understand that from the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the day of Arafah is not the only rukun of hajj, but it is one of the greatest characteristics or arkan of the Hajj. So similar here, we find this tremendous benefit from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continued, he said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيُبْغِدُ الْفَاهِشَ الْبَذِّ And indeed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he hates. Listen carefully, O Muhammad. Listen carefully, Ya Abdullah. Listen carefully, Ya Aisha. That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala indeed He hates harsh. He hates a harsh and foul mouthed individual. The characteristics that we have been raised with here, the speech which we still utter upon our tongues, the bad words, the cursing, the lying, these are all considered foul speech, bad words. Even words that we may not consider in our custom here in Trinidad to be bad, it is bad. And the believers, they utter these words without contemplating, without any restriction upon the tongue, without any reflection in the minds and the hearts. Whether this statement that I'm uttering is something that is pleasing to Allah, or whether this statement that I'm about to utter is going to be something that is going to earn me the anger and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, my noble believing brothers and sisters, our Lord tabaraka wa ta'ala has granted us a tremendous gift. He has given all of us, the believers, a tremendous gift. Allah azza wa jal has given us a role model to follow so that we can ascertain good morale. And we can learn beautiful words. And we can learn how to deal with our wives and our children. And our neighbors and our friends and the non-Muslims. And our co-workers. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has given us a qudwa hasana. And that is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For indeed Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he informed us in his book. لَقَدَ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ And indeed, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given for you in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Uswatun Hasana A good example A good example For whom? For who is this good example? Does every individual that is walking upon the street understand the moral conduct of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala said, لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ It is for the one who does what? Who is seeking Allah. Who is seeking the face of Allah. To please Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala and for the one that is doing what? That is working for the next life. وَالذَّقَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا and for the one that remembers Allah much, 
So this is a gift from Allah upon every single one of us, male and female, young and old. Furthermore, my noble believing brothers and sisters, even more specific concerning softness and kindness that was found in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala, He said, فَبِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Allahu Akbar, what is more clearer than this? And by the mercy of Allah, you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was what? Was kind to them, was generous to them, was soft-hearted to them, was lenient to them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ And had it been you, O Muhammad, was harsh-hearted, لَنْفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Then surely they would have done what? They would have run away from you. They would have fleed from you. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is confirming that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He was a person that was layin. He was a person that was lenient. A person that was soft. Furthermore, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala commanded after this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to even be lenient after addressing these characteristics by saying what? Fa'fu anhum wa staghfir lahum. Allahu Akbar. Look at these characteristics, O Sunni. Look at these characteristics, O believer. Look at these characteristics, O Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do what? Pardon them, O Muhammad. Pardon them when they fall short and seek forgiveness for them. And this wasn't the only command. Listen to what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said next. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And whenever there comes matters, then sit down and discuss with them. Take counsel from them. فَإِذَا أَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And whenever it is that you have taken a decision, then put your trust in Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ And indeed, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He loves those people that do what? They put their trust in Him, Jalla Jalalu. My noble, believing brothers and sisters, may Allah be generous to you. May Allah be generous and kind to you. And may Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala illuminate our path with the success and understanding of this noble religion, the religion of Al-Islam. There are numerous examples of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam interaction with the people that directs us towards leniency and kindness, Allahu Akbar. And from those examples that we mention today is that which is found in the Sahihain, the Sahih of Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim and the authority of the noble companion Abi Hurairata radiallahu ta'ala an that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sent a group from the companions to Najd and there they took hold of a town and they seized an individual whose name was Thumama ibn Uthal. Thumama ibn Uthal, he was the chief of Bani Hanifa. So the companions, radiallahu anhum, they brought back Thumama with them to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they ended up tying him to one of the pillars of the masjid. So one night went by. And the next day, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed by Thumama. And he said, Mada indaka ya Thumama? What is it that you have, O Thumama? What do you have? In other words, what do you have to say? So Thumama, he said, I have what is good, O Muhammad. If it is that you kill me, 
then revenge will be taken for my blood. And if it is that you are kind and you free me, then you are going to free an individual who is going to do what? Who is going to be acceptable. Someone that is going to appreciate your good deed. And if it is that you want money, wealth, then tell me how much you want and it will be given to you. So the Prophet wasallam he left Thumama. And another night went by. And then the Prophet wasallam passed by Thumama again. He said, Mada indaka ya Thumama? What do you have, O Thumama? What do you have to say? And Thumama, he said, the same thing I said yesterday. I have with me good. If it is that you kill me, then revenge will be taken from my blood. If it is that you free me, I am going to appreciate your kindness. If it is that you want wealth, say the amount and it will be given to you. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he left him again and then another night went by and the same proceedings happened. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Mada indaka ya Thumama? And Thumama, he responded with the same thing. What was the response of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said to the companions, Radiallahu Anhum, Atlaqu Thumama. Free Thumama. Let him go. Allahu Akbar. What was the effects of this action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon Thumama? Thumama, he went and he made ghusl. And then he came back to the masjid. And he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. I testify that there is none worthy of being worshipped in truth besides Allah. And that you, Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. And then listen to the words of Thumama. He said, Ya Muhammad, for wallahi ma kana ala wajh al ard wajhun abghadu ilayya min wajhik. He said, Oh Muhammad, by Allah, by Allah, there is not or there wasn't a face upon the earth that was more hated to me than your face. فَأَصْبَحَ وَجْحُكْ أَحَبَّ الْوُجُوءُ كُلِّهَا إِلَيَّ But today, your face is the most beloved of all faces to me. He said, وَوَاللَّهِ مَا كَانَ الدِّينِ أَبْغَدُ إِلَيَّ مِن دِينِكِ And there was no religion that was more hated to me on the face of the earth than your religion. For asbaha dinuk, but your religion today, ahabba ilayya min adyan kulliha, aw kama qal. Today your religion is the most beloved religion to me. Wa wallahi ma kana min baladin abghadu ilayya min baladik. And there was no city that was more hated to me than your city. فَأَسْبَحَ بَلَدُقْ أَحَبَّ الْبِلَادِ كُلِّهَا إِلَيَّ And today, your city is the most beloved city to me. All from what? From being lenient. From being kind. From being merciful. Thumama ibn Uthalin, he wasn't a Muslim yet. And look at how Muslims treat Muslims today. Furthermore, look at how the people who claim to be upon Sunnah treat each other today. Similarly, I want my noble believing brothers and sisters to reflect on the narration which appears in the Sahih of Imam Al Bukhari and An Nasa'i, and the authority of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. When it is that the Bedouin Arab came into the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he urinated in the masjid. He went into the corner of the masjid and he urinated in the masjid. Subhanallah contemplates, O oh brothers and sisters, 
contemplate. What was the reaction of all of the companions, radiallahu anhum? How did they react when it is that this man did this to a, a virtuous place to them, the masjid, the house of Allah? The companions, radiallahu anhum, they wanted to scold him and beat him. But the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he do? He said, du'uhu. He said, leave him alone. Allahu Akbar. Leave him alone. Rather take a tub of water or a bucket of water and throw it upon his urine. Wash the urine away. And there are many tremendous benefits concerning this action which we mentioned before. But the Prophet وسلم, he reprimanded the companions and he stopped them from doing what? From harming this man. Not only did he stop them, but he said to them, فَإِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُمْ مُيَسِّرِينَ And know you, O companions, and you, O Muslims, know you, O companions, and you, O Muslims, that you will send to the people as an ease. As an ease. وَلَمْ تُبْعَثُوا مُعَسِّرِينَ And you were not sent to the people to make hardships for them. What was the result of this tremendous leniency and kindness of the Prophet ﷺ? In other narrations, it mentioned that this man, he made dua. He said, اللهم ارحمني ومحمدًا ولا ترحموا معنا أحدًا O oh Allah, have mercy upon me and Muhammad and do not show mercy to anyone else with us. The Prophet wasallam he responded, he said, لَقَدْ تَهَجَّرْتَ وَاسِعًا He said, indeed, you have made a, 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 a vast request. You have restricted an affair which Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has made vast because we know that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is merciful. So in every statement here, in every action here of the Prophet wasallam, is a qudwatun hasana. It's leniency and kindness and good morale and good words. The Prophet wasallam, he had reason to do what? To say bad words because of these actions of the people. He could have responded with something that was harsh and coarse. Imagine someone came to the masjid and urinated. That would get anyone angry. A believer will become furiated by this action. But what did the Prophet ﷺ did? He restrained himself and he showed his kindness and his mercy. That which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala described him with Allahu Akbar. Likewise, my noble believing brothers and sisters, from the kind morale and nature of the Prophet ﷺ, we have the tremendous event. The tremendous event, Allahu Akbar which is found in the Sahihain of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim on the authority of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha where it is that a group from amongst the Jews they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what did they say? As-Samu alayka ya Abu al-Qasim they said and may death be upon you O Abu al-Qasim may death be upon you Think about this, that someone is telling you and may death be upon you. How would you respond? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he signify? What did he give to us as a model for our morale? He responded by saying, Wa alaykum. Wa alaykum. And upon you. Subhanallah al azim contemplates on what follows. This was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was a man, the best of humanity. He said, wa alaykum. But what about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha who was a woman and who should be more tender 
Who should be more tender? And who should be more lenient? How did our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha respond? She said, Bal alaykum usama wa dham. She said to the Jews, but rather upon you is death. Rather upon you is death. Allahu Akbar. And the disgrace of Allah, the curse of Allah, other narrations mentions, and she said, and the curse of Allah be upon you. This was our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. The story didn't stop here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reprimanded her. He said, Ya Aisha, la takuni fahishatan. O Aisha, do not be vile and foul in your words. Don't be vile and foul in your words. Allahu Akbar. She said, O Messenger of Allah, didn't you hear what they said? For the one who attacks us, didn't you hear what they said about us? She's saying the same thing. Our iman can never be measured to our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. She was the most knowledgeable woman concerning Islam and concerning the affairs of Tawheed. Never could it be measured. Look at the actions of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, didn't you hear what they said? He didn't need sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a man to respond for him. His wife responded, a woman responded, may what? May death be upon you. And the curse of Allah be upon you, Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, awalaysa qad raddattu alayhim alladhi qalu. Did I not already respond to what they said to me? I said to them, Wa alaykum, Allahu Akbar. These are tremendous morale of leniency, my noble believing brothers and sisters. Morale that we cannot learn from hanging out on the block. Morale that we cannot learn from walking the streets in Trinidad. Wallahi, morale that we cannot learn from Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and TikTok and morale that we cannot learn if it is that we're lazy and we don't make effort to learn. Morale that we cannot learn on our job sites and our businesses, our workplaces. Morale that we cannot learn in the schools. This is the morale that we can only learn in the religion of Al-Islam in the religion of Tawheed, in the Sunnah, the pure prophetic tradition of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Muslim collects the beautiful narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is also found in Adab al-Mufrad of Imam al-Bukhari on the authority of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Prophet Alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, Inna rifqa la yakunu fi shay'in illa zanahu. And there is nothing in which gentleness is applied to except that it beautifies that thing. Wala yunzi'u min shay'in illa shanahu. And if it is that leniency and gentleness is removed from anything, then know that this affair is going to be defective. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum min al-bayan wa dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu hadha al-qawl wa astaghfir lah li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimin min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وشروا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
wa syadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh My noble believing brothers and sisters this leniency and kindness which is mentioned here and which we have witnessed all of these evidences and this is not even a fraction of that which comes in the Quran and that which comes in the prophetic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is an affair which every believer has to work for it doesn't come upon us by going to sleep in the nights and waking up the next morning and then if we were coarse the day before or all our lives that we wake up and we're kind and gentle and understand that this gentleness is in all matters not only when we're with the brothers there are those that when they're in the masjid and with the brothers and vice versa the sisters when they're with the sisters they have the best of morale but when they're with their wives or the wives when they're with their husbands and the children you see the worst of character and morale coming out or when they are in their workplaces the most vilest speech comes out of their mouths or upon the streets even speaking like a gangster imitating the kufar man tashabbaha bi qaumin fa huwa min and whoever imitates a people is from them even imitating the singers the artists and the superstars and the sports personalities that are non muslims this is not permissible this is not permissible and this is not a praiseworthy characteristic even i say my noble believing brothers and sisters and i wish that you would open your hearts even my brothers and sisters loving the behavior of our mothers and fathers which are evil behaviors it is not permissible it is not permissible and refuge is sought with Allah from bad behavior and this is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to make the tremendous supplication and this dua it is found in the collection of imam at-tirmidhi and shaykh al-albani rahimahullah ta'ala declared it to be sahih in sahih al-jami' that our noble prophet alayhi salatu was salam he used to supplicate allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkarat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-ahwa oh allah i seek refuge with you i'm asking you O oh allah i'm seeking refuge with you from having evil morale and from me acting with evil actions and from me having evil desires this was the dua of our noble messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is the dua that every one of us should memorize a short and concise supplication which all of us should moisten our tongues with Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkarat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-ahwa O oh Allah I seek refuge with you from evil behavior morale and evil actions and evil desires my noble believing brothers and sisters fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fear your Lord azza wa jal this life is not a game this life is running away from us fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with regards to your responsibilities with regards to the faraid the salawat in the masjid o men with regards to the responsibilities of our wives and children 
with regards to the responsibilities of our non-Muslim neighbors and co-workers fi Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala with regards to them and be of the best moral conduct be of the best moral character and understand that if it is that you claim to be a Muslim a person of Iman then you are supposed to be a Qudwatun Hassana you are supposed to be a role model for them for everyone that is within your circle everyone that is within your reach the father a role model to his wife the husband a role model to his wife and to his children and to the family members the children a role model to whom to their friends and companions and if it is that your parents are non muslims a role model to them the people who have jobs a role model to your co-workers the people who have businesses a role model to your staff members you have to be a qudwatun hasana you have to remember the obligations of islam because you are going to be questioned about it you are going to be asked about it you are going to be asked about your interactions you are going to be asked about your words that you said you have to be concerned with these words you have to be careful you have to be people that what that say beautiful things because up until this day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned to his lord over 1400 years ago and up till this day his moral conduct continues to have a great effect upon humanity up until this day the most accepted and the most vastly growing religion is the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the religion of al-islam is the religion of Allah so fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala